Good morning, good evening, and good day. This is your host, producer and engineer, Roy of Hollywood, welcoming you again to Something's Happening. We'll be here till 6 a.m. with Dynamite Radio for Night People. And uh, we're going to look deeply into the wonderful world of ethnopharmacological plants and plant helpers and plant healers with Jonathan Ott live in studio. First time in a couple of years. Hi, Jonathan. Good evening. Uh, uh, nice to be on your show as always. Well, I'm honored to have you here up from Mexico. And uh, we're going to have to uh, identify you for our newer listeners. Um, you're a chemist. Nominally so. Uh, I do have some training in chemistry. Actually, now I'm more engaged in writing as a career rather than chemistry. But uh, yes, I'm, I'm a phytochemist, and my specialty is entheogenic plants or shamanic inebriants or plant teachers and their ethnopharmacognosy. What is a phytochemist and what is ethnopharmacognosy? Well, a phytochemist is one who studies the chemistry of plants. Uh, I'm a natural products chemist, and I specialize in plants. Ethnopharmacognosy, you often hear the term ethnopharmacology. Uh, I prefer the term ethnopharmacognosy in as much as pharmacology is the study of the effects of drugs in intact bodies. And uh, I feel that what shamans do is better described by the word pharmacognosy, which is the study of the production, cultivation, processing, and use of drugs. And so I prefer the term ethnopharmacognosy, but it's more or less interchangeable with ethnopharmacology. Um, what is the difference between drugs and plants and in this study? Between drugs and plants? Well, uh, as far as uh, the scientific definition is concerned, a plant is simply a crude drug. Um, and but uh, a drug is a crude plant, <laughs> right, or whatever. But uh, uh, drug is unfortunately a loaded term these days, <clears throat> and uh, it has acquired rather a pejorative connotation. Um, drug, strictly speaking, is something bad in our culture, and uh, I think for many people, what drug means is something illegal, something dangerous, something prohibited. Uh, Alcohol, however dangerous it might be, is not usually considered to be a drug. I would use a broader designation, and for me, a, a, a broader definition of drug would be any pharmacologically active substance, plant, chemical, uh, extract of plant, etc. So, um, let me see, I'll go over, you, you have written, um, and we have discussed in the past, um, the pharmacotheon on entheogenic drugs, they are plant sources in history. It's sort of everything you could possibly want to know about every plant, uh, pharmacotheon. And quite a few things you probably didn't want to know as well. On that, yeah. <laughs> and, and then uh, their most recent book, Ayahuasca Analogs, and Pantheon, Pangeon and Theogens. And then uh, sort of secret, I thought it was out of print, the uh, Cacahuatl Eater, the Ruminations of an Unabashed Chocolate Addict. Yes. And I've just published a new book, uh, hot off the press, so to speak, and it's entitled uh, The Age of Entheogens and the Angel's Dictionary. And uh, this consists of two essays. Uh, the first is uh, The Age of Entheogens, the Pharmocratic Inquisition, and the Entheogenic Reformation. And it's an historical theory concerning the importance of entheogens in archaic religion, of entheogens meaning what some people call hallucinogens or psychedelics, but in this case the plants themselves, the shamanic plants, shamanic inebriants or plant teachers, um, and there's the suppression of their use by what I have chosen to call the pharmacratic inquisition. And uh, the phenomenon that we are seeing in the world today, which I call the entheogenic reformation, constitutes a rediscovery or a rebirth in use of these archaic sacramental plants. Uh, the second essay in the book is entitled The Angel's Dictionary, and it is in fact a dictionary of words pertaining to uh, sacred inebriants, ecstatic states, and allied topics. Uh, it has about uh, 320 words. Uh, backed up by definitions from, uh, uh, sorry, by citations supporting the definitions. These are uh, many languages or just? Yes, the um, the words are derived from uh, 
Well, there, of course, the center of gravity in this case is English, but uh, there are also some 70 words, if memory serves me, from non-Indo-European languages, uh, from various indigenous tongues and so forth. Uh, Non-European languages, sorry. Some of them are Indo-European, some not. Um, and uh, it's, uh, there are definitions are supported by quotations in the manner of the Oxford English Dictionary. I think there are a total of about 450 quotations called from classical drug and general literature. Uh, entheogens, strange new word. Entheogens. How does uh, what does it mean, and why why is this term used uh, instead of uh, uh, the usual psychedelic plants or what other else? Psychedelic in general. Hallucinogenic, right? Well, the, the commonest terms for this are psychedelic and hallucinogenic. Hallucinogenic is the most widely used term in the scientific literature. Psychedelic is the most widely used term in the counterculture and does have a, a good deal of currency in the scientific literature as well. Well, we proposed the term entheogen in 1979 in the Journal of Psychedelic Drugs, now the Journal of Psychoactive Drugs. Uh, a committee, an informal committee organized by my late teacher, R. Gordon Wasson, Carl Ruck, uh, professor of classics at Boston University, and Danny Staples, also a classicist from Boston University, Jeremy Bigwood, and myself. We were looking for a term to describe uh, what I would call um, shamanic inebriance, plants used by shamans to achieve ecstasy or out-of-body experiences or extraordinary states of consciousness, as they're sometimes called. The problem with hallucinogenic is that it is based on the notion of an hallucination, which to psychiatrists is a sign of pathology and a symptom of uh, pathological. That's saying something that isn't there, really there. Exactly. You think it's, it's there. A lie. The essence of hallucination is you're seeing something that's not there, a distortion, a, a, a false perception. And uh, psychedelic, um, the problem I see with psychedelic is that it is uh, grounded in 60s countercultural use. The, really, the prototypical psychedelic drug is LSD. That's mainly what people took in the psychedelic era. And this, as we all know, is a product of modern pharmacological science that has not yet been found to occur in a plant, although it may someday be found uh, to do so. Um, and so we speak of psychedelic music, psychedelic art. It's very definitely founded in the, the 1960s, especially in the United States. And uh, it, it refers to to non-traditional uh, use of these substances. And it seems to me in Congress to speak of shamanic use of a psychedelic plant because of this connotation. And I might add that it has a decidedly pejorative connotation for people that are not in the counterculture. If you mention the word psychedelic, uh, it, it evokes a very... Dirty specific, hippie. Right. Crazy. Exactly. Uh, Dirty hippie, uh, Mansonite, whatever. So um, entheogen means specifically, it derives from uh, entheos, entheoi, a Greek root that means uh, divine within, literally. Uh, we use the root common of the word enthusiasm, which means inspired by the divine. Literally, the divine is breathed into one. That's the true meaning of enthusiasm. Entheos. And so entheogen, uh, adding the root, gen, uh, sorry, the suffix gen, meaning becoming, it gives you a word that means roughly becoming divine within. And we felt that this, it's not meant to describe the chemistry of these substances, nor is it meant to describe their pharmacology. It's meant to describe the cultural context of their use, or what we would call the set and setting. And so uh, we felt that that best described the traditional use of these substances. And so it enables us to speak in the same breath of very diverse substances with very diverse pharmacological action. For example, those that favor the use of psychedelic, they're in agreement that the psilocybin and mushrooms are psychedelic. They would say that peyote and mescaline is psychedelic. But they will say normally, well, but the Amanita muscaria mushroom is not psychedelic, neither is Salvia divinorum psychedelic. So we needed a word to talk in the same breath about all of these substances, some of them with quite distinct pharmacological effects, and they're not uh, all of them classic psychedelics in the mold of psilocybin, mescaline, uh, ergot alkaloids like LSD.